Okay, here's where we last were. Remember, we have two pages now, um, and you can see them kind of structured over here on the left. Um, this guessing game is actually not being used anymore. That was our talk about uh, JavaScript, but you can kind of see everything laid, laid out here, and you can see things laid out here, and we have this neat link that goes to our tip calculator. Then now we'll calculate some tips for us. Beautiful, and we have a little react interaction there. So we spent a lot of time talking about HTML and JavaScript so far, but we haven't talked about CSS as much. And to be quite frank, this looks terrible, right? This is not a good look for a form. If you saw this on a website, you would probably immediately leave thinking it was um, nefarious. So we've got to start fixing this. And the way that we're going to fix this is we're going to use CSS. We're going to focus for a moment on the CSS here on the tip calculator. So I want to go to my tip calculator HTML to start off and just kind of look at remembering that I've got this style sheet linked and kind of looking at how everything is structured here. And we're going to find out why we're mess looking at how everything's structured here in a second. So one of the really important skills, believe it or not, being a developer is how do you look up information? Because honestly, even though I teach this class, I still don't remember all the keys for CSS and how to style them. Um, there's a lot and they each do a little something different. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple places we can go on um, our class website. You'll notice I have a sheet for this, a style sheet, um, uh, cheat sheet kind of thing that'll give you a lot of indications, but we can also use the web as a really powerful resource for finding some of this out. So let's look up how to style a form element CSS. And let's look at our results for a second. I've mentioned in class, I really like W3 schools. I think that's a good resource for a lot of this stuff. Um, I also, you can use a Stack Overflow, although Stack Overflow generally is good for really targeted questions and not kind of like general understanding. Um, and then MDM is another one. You're going to get a lot of information, maybe more than you need in some cases, unless you really want to kind of do a deep dive. Uh, so be aware of that. But probably the most sort of like our level beginner friendly is um, W3 schools. So when we look at this, we can kind of see they've already started styling a form here. So this is the HTML that's already styled. And they can tell you how you would style input fields. So for instance, we can use the width property. Here it is. And they've got it set to 100%. Um, you can target specific kinds of input depending on what type it is. This is how you would do that. You can do padded inputs, right? Using the padding property to add space inside the text field. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and then here's an example that they've already done styling their text box. Um, for instance, they've added borders, so on and so forth. Okay, so there's lots of cool information. Let's start trying some of this out ourselves. So one of the things I want to draw your attention to is the fact that we have these different tags here, and we can kind of target these different tags based on our style sheet. So we've done this before where we kind of said, okay, I want all of my H1 tags to be styled in a certain way for our purposes. Let's just go after the color op, um, the color attribute and we'll make it this nice blue violet color. Okay. So we can refresh that save and refresh over here. We can kind of see what that looks like. Nice. Um, and maybe I don't want this H1 to be this color, but I do want this H1 to be this color. So um, one of the ways we can do that is instead of targeting whole tags like this, which generally actually just isn't good, um, good practice, we can target either an ID or we can target something called a class. Now, let me talk about the difference between a class and an ID. So we're going to give this a class. We're going to call it um, form title. Then we can come back into our style sheet and instead of doing H1, we can now hit the period sign and say we want form title. And now if we refresh this, you'll now notice that tip calculator is in this nice blue violet, violet color, but your total bill is not. When you put a period, it means you're targeting a specific class that you've defined and the class, the only class we've defined so far is this class right here. Now we can also target IDs. So let's go ahead and target the ID total output. I mean down here. And to target IDs, 
you're gonna do hashtag total output. Um, I think it's hashtag. I'm gonna have to check that. And we'll make color green in this case. Let me see if I've titled my, oh yeah, okay, good. Hashtag total output, and you'll notice our total output is now green, and we've targeted the ID. The important difference between class and ID is that you can give anything the same class. So let's go ahead and give our label here, class equals form title. Uh, generally, that's not a good idea, right? Because this is not the form title, so we wouldn't want to give it this class. But we could, just to kind of see the results. And you'll notice it picks up that same styling. So even though these are two different things, this is a label, this is an H1, because we're targeting the new class we made instead of the particular element, we can make anything match that styling, okay? However, if I try to change the ID on this and call it total output we're going to have a problem let's go ahead and refresh our page oh interesting okay i did not expect that to, to work it should not have worked ids should only be used for individual elements i'm surprised it didn't throw us an error uh, maybe it won't it won't catch this on its own but we should catch this we should never be giving two things the same id ids refer to individual elements um, of a particular type meaning um, there's only ever it, one H1 that is going to be total output, and there's only going to be one total output on the page. However, classes can be called, can, many things can fall under the same class. And what I mean by that is, if we don't, if we wanted a, this form to look a little bit different maybe than other forms, the best thing for us to do would be give this form inputs a particular class name and only use that class name for this form's inputs. So for example, well, and let me show you why we don't want to do all inputs real quickly. So if I come over here and I say, okay, well, let me style all inputs a certain way. And I'm going to say, let's give all inputs a border. Um, and border has some interesting, uh, let's see if we can go to definition and see what we can find. Yeah. So border will take a couple different things. It's going to take a width, a style and a color. So we can do like two pixels uh, solid and let's call it uh, purple. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we need the PX there, but we'll see. And let's go ahead and refresh that and see what happens. So if I wanted a purple border on each one of my text inputs here, that would be fine. But notice it also puts a border around my submit button, which looks kind of weird and not great. Why? Well, because it's targeting all inputs as opposed to just the inputs I wanted. Now, like we saw on W3 schools, let's go back here for a second. One of the things we could do is we could specify the type of input we want. In this case, maybe I only want the text type. That would be okay. That would be one way of doing this. And you can see actually, uh, oh, type, hmm. Let me go back to my inputs real quickly. Do I have their type set? Oh, their type number. That's why. Let's go to type number. Let's refresh. Um, I You know, I actually think type number is not an allowed type. Let's change these to type text. We probably should have done that from the get-go. Let's change this back to text. Now you'll notice I'm bouncing around a lot from page to page. I am trying things out. We are gonna iterate like this, especially with styling, you're gonna do this often. Interesting that we're still not getting um, a reaction to it. Maybe I'm typing it wrong. Let me double check what uh, W3Schools has. Input type equals text. Oh, type number was a valid one, it just wasn't working. Have I entered it wrong? Maybe there can't be a space here. Uh, type equals text. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, it can't be a space there. It can be really finicky. Um, so number was a valid one. Okay, so let's go back to number. Because that was more accurate to what we were doing here. Uh, 
One of the most challenging things I think about web development generally is how sort of finicky these can be. Okay, my point of this whole thing was though, see how we've now just selected these two inputs and now submit no longer has that purple border. That's one way of doing it. But let's say we wanted to do a whole nother form. I'm gonna grab all of this again. I'm gonna copy it just for, uh, nope, I wanna copy. Just for the purposes of showing you this issue, I'm gonna hit Command V. Come on. Okay. Um, if I did this and I refresh it, I'm going to get this other form. And let's say on this other form, I didn't want to have purple borders. I can't go back to my style sheet, do this again, right? Command copy. Because on style sheets, everything should only ever be done once and change this to say blue. Because watch what happens. Now everything's blue. This part of my style sheet just took over from this part of my style sheet. I can't, with this format, I can't have two different colors on my style sheet here or different styling at all. That's where classes come in. So what you really want to do is instead of doing this at all, and we'll go ahead and get rid of the second form. We don't need it anymore. We're going to go ahead and give forms, inputs on this form, a particular class. So we're going to say this is a class um, text underscore input underscore tip calc form. Long classes are not a problem, right? We don't, there's not really a good reason to limit your class. The clarity is better than anything. Um, you'll see in some JavaScript. Uh, in some CSS classes, you'll see really sh short form, um, but that's okay. And actually, we don't even need to retype this. We can just command copy, command V, go over to our style sheet, hit dot, command V. And now we can start styling this. And we can say things like, we do want a border. We want it to be like one pixel. We want it to be solid. By the way, there's other things we can do like dashed, right? And let's say we just want it to be a nice gray color. Okay. Let's refresh this now and see what this looks like. There we go. Very, very normal, very nice looking. We can actually bump this up to maybe two pixels. Come back over here, refresh again. Notice sort of the iteration that we're doing here. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I don't love about the way this is coming together. And it has to do with kind of the spacing and how everything looks. So let's go back to our HTML and let's consider some other things here. For example, we have this form, tip calc form, that's wrapping everything up. So we could style just this form. So let's go back into here. Let's target the ID, this very specific, right, tip calc form. And we can start doing some things here. For instance, maybe I want a border on this. That's going to be one pixel. It's going to be solid as well. It's also going to be gray. Okay, we like some consistency here. Let's see what that looks like. Nice. Now that kind of separates the form out a little bit. The spacing is still a little bit weird. Let's go ahead and add some spacing. Um, there's two ways of sort of adding spacing. There's adding spacing inside. Let's go ahead and add... Uh, maybe 10 pixels Let's see what that looks like refresh there we go now that kind of adds spacing around it pulling it away from the border we like that you might also want to pull the border away from the side of the page that's called margin and we can kind of do five pixels additional margin Let's see what that looks like and you can see that kind of pulls it in from the side of the page a little bit. You might also notice that there's that these are really sort of cramped together. And the way to do that, we can do that in the form if we wanted to. But we can also go down to our inputs and give them a little bit of padding. And you can decide exactly where you want that padding to go if you want to do that. Or you can just do it here. We're going to do like three pixels of padding. Let's see what that looks like. And we get a little bit of space, probably not enough. Let's go up to like 10 pixels. 
that's a big jump, but let's just see. Okay. Maybe too much, but we can see. Um, I want to notice something here too. Notice how the inputs keep expanding because of the padding we're getting it. These are filling up the entirety of their space. And that's why these borders are kind of crashing like this. Um, so if you want to give them more space, uh, we can also do margin. Actually, let's take padding out. I want to explain padding a little bit differently. I don't like how I just did that. So let's go back to margin for a second, because that's really what I was trying to target. I want the space outside of the element to be more, not inside the element. Okay. There we go. That's what I was trying to replicate. Good. So now we've got a little bit of space between the elements. We can actually go up to maybe seven pixels. Give us a little more space. Good. Um, I would like these to kind of stretch the entirety, I think, of this border here. So let's go ahead and style their width. And we're going to go, we want the entirety of the border, so we're going to go 100%. Um, and let's see. And notice we can do pixels, we can do percentage. There's a couple different ways you can do inputs into different attributes. Okay, one of the things I want you to notice about this is notice how it came down to the next line, right? Because it wanted 100% of that space, so it's not going to leave any space for the bill amount. Notice that if I extend it, it's going to extend with our page. So percentage is relative. It's not absolute, meaning it's relative to the page size. It's not absolute, whereas pixels are absolute, right? If I set this to 100 pixels, which is not very many, um, you can see that it's going to give it a size. And no matter how much I extend the page, its size doesn't change. That's an absolute size as opposed to the 100% relative size. Now, why is this sort of taking up all of this space? Well, that's because different um, browsers are going to interpret certain things in CSS a little bit differently. It's not quite as hard and fast as, say, JavaScript. So you sometimes have to make adjustments for what's going on inside each individual browser, and there are ways of making the relative sizes match a little bit better. But for our purposes for now, let's just make it look nice by putting it at like 80%, and let's see what that looks like. Nice. See, that's much cleaner. It even gives us a little bit of space here for our submit button if we want our submit button off to the side here. Um, I think it'd be nice to start labeling, start styling some of these labels in here. So let's go ahead and we will style our label tag. Um, or, probably better, come in here and let's give our labels their own class. So we're going to call this class equals... And we can say label underscore tip underscore calc underscore form. Okay, a nice clear class name. Copy that. Uh, put that for our other label here. and refresh our page, nothing changes because all we do is add classes. But if we come in here and edit that class, so we're gonna call, oh, I think I can just hit Command V because I just copied it, yep. And now we can do some things. Let's go ahead and uh, first of all, let's change some things about the font. I think the font could be a little bit bigger. Let's see what a medium font looks like. Um, what else can we change? Let's look at uh, font. So we could also set the font family. Um, and you have options of autocomplete here, or you can actually bring in your own font families, which we can talk more about later. Let's do fun. Let's have some fun. Let's make it a fantasy. Um, and we can also change the weight. Um, bold, bolder, lighter, all that kind of stuff. We'll go ahead with bold. Let's refresh and let's see what this looks like. Aha. And now we've got, I think this is like uh, papyrus maybe. Uh, we've got some things happening here. <laughs> the font is pretty silly. Let's go ahead and find ourselves another font family quickly. Uh, maybe something fairly traditional, right? There we go. And you can play around and kind of see. Um, I actually don't think we need... I think when you list a bunch of these like this, it's because um, it, it it's going to go by whatever is available or not available. So if Cambria is available, it'll use Cambria, but if it's not, it'll go down that list. So okay, I guess Cambria actually isn't available. 
Okay. Font family gets a little more complicated. We can deal with that later. Let's just go ahead and, and leave it like that. Um, and you'll notice it went back to its standard font because Cambria wasn't available. Um, and what's available is dependent upon the browser. It's dependent upon the individual computer. But we can actually force fonts onto our page if we want to. But that's a that's a little bit of a different story. And we can, we can play with that later. Okay. One other thing I want to do is this is all, these are all very sharp corners that I don't love. So let's go ahead and round out our corners a little bit. And we can do that by using something called uh, border radius. And we're going to put this at something like 10 pixels. That's a pretty extreme border radius, but let's go ahead and look at it. And you'll see we get these nice pill shape kind of um, inputs really rounded on the sides. But do you see how our numbers start kind of crashing into them? Uh, and we don't have very, it feels like we're cramped. It feels like we don't have much room to edit our numbers here. Not great. And this is why I wanted to go back and re-talk about that padding issue. Because if we wanted some more padding inside of our um, text boxes here, so we had more space to type things in, we can add padding in this space. And we get a little bit more padding inside of our text areas to make that a little bit nicer. Um, and we can edit, we can do some things with the submit button. I actually want to give our form a little bit of a background color. Uh, let's do a light gray, help it stand out a little bit. There we go. Um, and then we can actually, I think these would be better maybe as, um, let's do, I guess we just do. Uh, maybe too light. Um, I uh, can we? I'm wondering if we can do a. There's all sorts of font things here, right? I'm wondering if we can do an outline to our font. That's a good question. So this is another example of like, let's look it up, right? Um, let's add outline to font CSS. Uh, so I just did what you shouldn't do. I clicked on the top link just to see uh, what it was when really what I should have done is gone down and let's see. Um, okay. does look like there is an outline property. Let's give that a try. And let's say we want it to be one pixel. We want it to be solid. And we want it to be black. I, let's see if this works. And, and you can scroll down to see kind of um, if it what it looks like. Usually. Oh, show demo. Okay. So this looks actually more like a border to a element than it is actually a outline to letters. Which is probably going to be the case. But let's try it anyway. I bet you outline to letters is a little bit, yeah, it's just a border. Okay. Outline to letters is probably a little bit more complicated and probably depends on the font, if I had to guess. Um, I'm just going to scroll back quickly just to see if. So, because this is a specific question, this might not be a bad place to look at Stack Overflow and see what they have to say. Okay. So, it looks like it's maybe not available and you can see supported here like I was talking about right because not everything's going to be supported in everything in every um, browser so that's good to know um, yeah and you can see here they've got like a, a text shadow one um, I mean we can try it right why not Let's go ahead and try, I think the one we're going to want is text. No, text dot. Hmm. 
you could go through and play with all of these. Let's go ahead and, oh, there we go. Text stroke. Um, and let's put it at like nine pixels, maybe. Nah, that's way too many, right? One pixel probably is enough. Um, and then let's do So I've not tried this before, so we are just playing around at this point. Text stroke color will make it black. Let's see what happens, right? Why not? Hey, there we go. Nice. We got a little bit of an outline there. It looks terrible, um, but it is there. Let's go ahead and let's make this two pixels and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, more is worse. Um, okay. Anyway. Just playing around, and that, that's exactly what you guys can do. If you have an idea for an effect you want to recreate, just look it up and see see what you can find. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna get rid of the white color here. And generally, like if you can go with the default, if you want black, for example, on your fonts, just don't put anything. You don't need to specify black. Okay, so we've started styling our form, and in fact, actually, I'm gonna give our form uh, border radius too looks a little bit nicer um we don't need 10 pixels i think five would be a great plenty and let's see yeah so it just gives us this nice rounded border here um and you kind of are i hope you're starting to get the idea of how we can make things look a little bit less like a nefarious web page and something more we don't mind visiting and that's kind of this oh by the way we can also change on our inputs another thing you can do is font size medium let's say and actually let's go with our font size here to large um and then we can you make your form look a little bit more like a a bigger form than it would be otherwise and because we're doing the percentage you you can see again it's kind of it's it's um relative it's not absolute kind of where things where submit and everything shifts to it's nice that it will kind of move as as the page moves um okay i'm gonna leave it there your skills check go have fun styling your tip calculator right um come up with your own styles decide what kind of colors borders backgrounds whatever you want to use um and turn that in um and if you want to go ahead and style your your beginning page too to give it a little bit more uh pizzazz um, actually, let's do one more thing. I, I know I can't stop, right? This and this is what this is absolutely what happens to me all the time when I'm doing this kind of thing is I start looking, playing, iterating, which is exactly what you should be doing, right? This is this is how you should be uh, doing your your design, and it's it's totally okay and and expected. So we're gonna align text align um, center here. I want to see what a, a text align center. Yeah, see that looks a little bit nicer. Um, having the, I think having this, um, header aligned center, but it's up to you. That's how you can do your text alignment. If you want, um, if you always want these to be on another line, by the way, you can add breaks in here, uh, between the label and the, oh, not form. I want just a break there. Um, and that way, this will always be on a different line. That's how you put in like a nice line break. Um, and then and I can show you that by, let's go ahead back to here. Let's put this down to like 50%. And that way you can see, see how this one jumps back up on the same line. This one stays on a different line, staying on a different line because of that break. Um, I also noticed our input is indented a little bit here, but our labels are not. And that has to do with the margin we put here. Um, probably a good idea to go ahead and put that margin in our uh, labels as well. So that all lines up nicely. Uh, margin, seven pixels. And by the way, if you're going to do everything to a, everything like that to a form anyway, you can always put that in your, as a part of your form, as a part of your padding. Let me show you that in a second. So first of all, see how that, if we add that margin there, it moves that over. But because we're doing margin seven pixels on everything anyway, if we take that out, okay, refresh, you can see everything's kind of squished together now. And we go into our padding, 
we can add additional padding to the left side of seven pixels. And we should get, uh, okay, it actually reduced it. Let's go up to um, 17 pixels. We can kind of produce that same result of moving things over if we're gonna do the same padding on the left side for everything. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want a margin. Maybe we do. Um, maybe we only want a margin in part of our, maybe we only want a margin like on the bottom um, of 10 pixels to kind of put that space between them again. We can do that too, see? So you can kind of do, depending on where you want things to happen, but if you want something to happen to everything inside of a form, you can do that on the whole form. If you want only to happen to things, uh, individual things, you can come in here and do it to individual things. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing around now. Like I said, I can go out forever. Um, go ahead and style your own tip calculator and turn that in as your skill check.